It's showing us the, the, the different layers of the arteries and veins. This part, this middle vessel here, this is the artery, and this one and this one are veins. What we need to know here is the three layers. This layer, the orange layer here, this is the endothelium, and this is the basement membrane around it. This is called the tunica entema. Entema means the innermost. This one here that contains muscles, this is the tunica media, which is the middle one. This external one here, this is called the tunica externa, also known as adventitia. Tunica entema, media, and external, which is adventitia. If you compare that to the vein, it's basically the same. So this is tunica entema. This one here is tunica media, which contains the muscles. And this one is the external, which is the adventitia. The difference here is, if you compare the muscle th thickness from here, to here, you will see that the muscular layer, which is the middle layer, is a lot thicker. So that's what we need to know here, the three layers, entima, media, and external. For this model here, we will need to know the different blood vessels. And the blood vessels, we are going to start for, with the major blood vessels, which are at the base of the heart. This is the base, and this is the apex of the heart. So we we'll start at the base. And uh, we, we can do that here, and we can also see it in the heart model itself, if you still remember, the major blood vessels. So we will start with the arteries and then do the veins. The arteries first. You will start from this one here. This is the ascending aorta that's coming from the left ventricle. Ascending aorta. And then this would be the aortic arch. And then the descending aorta will be going down. So ascending, arch, and then the descending. The ascending aorta will give you two arteries, the, the right and left coronary artery. We did that in the heart, but you need to know the branches. So out of the ascending aorta, you have the two coronary arteries, right and left. Out of the arch, the right side is different than the left side when we talk about the arteries. In the veins, it's the same, but in the arteries, it's different. In the right side, you have this trunk that will split into right common carotid and right subclavian. On the left side is different. The, the left common carotid and the left subclavian arises directly from the arch. They don't have a trunk like this. So this is the difference between right side and left side. And the right side, those two arteries arises from a trunk. And the left side, they arises directly from the aortic arch. So right common carotid, right subclavian. If you follow the right common carotid, it will take you to the internal, and the external carotid, internal carotid, will enter to feed the brain inside. And the external carotid will divide into branches to feed the face. So the branch that's going like this one here, this will be the facial because it's going to the face. This will, will go to the temporal region. So this will be the temporal, um, or superficial temporal artery going down here and so on. So going back here, this is the aortic arch, brachiocephalic trunk on the right side only. Uh, common carotid, right common carotid, right subclavian. If you follow the right subclavian, the name, the easy way is you take it by the compartment, the location. So this first part here, the clavicle should be here. So this part is under the clavicle. You call it the subclavian. This part, at this point here, in the armpit or in the axilla. So you call it the axillary artery. This part right here, this one, this is beside the brachium. The brachium means arm or humerus. So this part here all the way until it starts to split, we will call this part brachial. And this is the one that we feel it exactly at this point when you're doing the, when you're measuring the blood pressure. So starting from here to here, you call this brachial artery. And then the brachial artery will split into two arteries. Again, it's the location. If you still remember, you have the radius on ulna. So the one that goes toward the radius will be called the radial artery. The one that goes toward the ulna is called the ulnar artery. So this is for the upper limb part. If you follow back here again, this is the ascending that come from the left ventricle, uh, arch, and then the descending. The descending itself is two parts. It's descending from here all the way to here. So anything between this point and this point, the whole thing here is called descending aorta because it's going down, it's descending. The part that's inside the thorax is called the, th the descending thoracic aorta. The part in the abdomen is called descending abdominal aorta. And we have branches that we need to know that come out of this. This one right here, this is the first one that you'll always see. 
and this is called the celiac trunk and the celiac trunk will give you splenic that's going this way toward the spleen it will give you hepatic that's going go toward the, the liver so this will be the first one and this is coming from the anterior aspect of the aorta the next one will be this one here the one that's hanging above the renal vessels and this will be the superior mesenteric and mesenteric means mesentery and the mesentery is the connective tissue of the intestine um, the last one should arise here which is this one from the anterior aspect still this will be the inferior mesenteric one more time you have three from the anterior aspect of the aorta one two three celiac trunk this is not an artery it's a trunk trunk means it will divide into arteries celiac trunk superior mesenteric which is superior to the renal uh, renal blood vessels and the last one that's here is the inferior mesenteric celiac superior mesenteric inferior mesenteric we have another two that we need to know but it's not from the anterior aspect it's from the sides this one here you don't see much out of it it's going towards this red here it's going toward the kidney so that will be the renal artery and this one here it's not coming from the cent from the central part of the anterior aspect it's just going to the side and you see it you see it like a plexus like this so the, uh, this will be the gonadal and gonadal means testes or ovaries depending on if this is a male or female so gonadal whatever t uh, uh, testicular or um, ovarian at the end of the descending aorta it will split and this is called the level of bifurcation it will split into right and left common iliac and iliac means ilium this part right here is called the ilium so right common iliac left common iliac common means it's going to split into two so it's going to split into internal iliac right internal iliac and the right external iliac this will run externally this is where the name came from and this will go internally if you follow the external it will run beside the femur you call it the femoral artery and then if you go down more the same way that we did um, with the um, uh, with the upper limb so if you follow it or actually follow it down here this is beside the femur you call it the femoral or femoral this is in the popliteal area popliteal fossa which is behind the uh, the knee joint you call it popliteal artery and then the popliteal artery will split into anterior tibial and posterior tibial anterior tibial it's anterior to the tibia posterior tibial is posterior to the tibia and then if you follow it down this will be called the dorsalis pedis it's an uh, extension of it and if you look on this side obviously they are trying to show you different stuff from right to left so here that will be uh, the dorsal arch this is the arch that's feeding um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the foot and the, the, the phalanges here. So these are called the phalangeal arteries. This is for the arteries. If we move to the veins, start from the large ones again. This one up here is the superior vena cava, and this one down here is the inferior vena cava. Both of them are bringing the blood to this chamber, which is the right atrium. This is different than the arteries because you have right brachiocephalic vein and left brachiocephalic vein so right and left are the same it was not like the arteries and then if you follow the right brachiocephalic it will give you the the right um, uh, internal jugular and the right external jugular left same thing right internal and external so the brachiocephalic vein will divide into two branches internal jugular and subclavian external will come from the subclavian okay so internal jugular which follow the right ex right external uh, internal sorry right internal jugular will follow the right common carotid the left internal jugular will let will follow the um, the left and um, uh, common carotid arch so let's follow here same as we talked about in the arteries just some a little bit of a difference this part right here we called we called also the subclavian because it's under the clavicle as well just like the artery but the difference in the vein is this continuation here will be called the brachial and then basilic and this one is called cephalic we didn't have that in the arteries otherwise the the rest will be radian and ulnar but you have one that's going obliquely here this one here this is a special for the veins it's called the mcv or the medial cubital vein which is going obliquely like this otherwise it's the same and you will go to the to the arch um, 
So this is for the superior vena cava. If you go to the inferior vena cava, you go down with the inferior vena cava, it will also give some branches. Right renal vein, left renal vein, and gonadal will be here. If you follow down, it will also split exactly the same like the arteries. We said right common iliac, left common iliac, external, internal, same thing exactly. This branch right here will be the right common iliac vein, left common iliac vein. This is the right internal iliac. This is the right external iliac. This is the left internal iliac here, and this is the left external iliac. If you follow it down, you will see this huge vein going all the way down. This is called the great saphenous vein, and this will be called the femoral vein. So great saphenous vein will be here, and the great saphenous vein will give you this dorsal, dorsal arch as well. Um, so this is for, for the, the venous side. Um, however, there is a, a, th a third uh, circulation that we also need to know, which is the hepatic portal circulation. Hepatic portal circulation is a circulation, a special circulation that starts from the digestive tract, bringing the blood containing nutrients to the, to the liver. That's it. It's, it's have nothing to do with the heart, which is the purple part. So all the purple part here is called the hepatic portal. And this is not the same as hepatic. Hepatic portal is not the same. So this is a hepatic portal circulation. This is a special circulation, a short circuit between your digestive organs, like the, the, the stomach, small intestine, large intestine. And it will, this will bring everything that's been absorbed, the nutrients, it will, it will take the blood carrying the nutrients that have been absorbed, will gather it from all over, and will take it in this vein right here, and this is called the hepatic portal vein, that will bring all the blood containing the nutrients to the liver, and the liver will take care of it. Um, this will contain the superior mesenteric, the inferior mesenteric vein, and this is a splenic vein. All of them will come together to make the hepatic portal vein, which will end up entering the liver, and this is the end of the hepatic portal circulation between the large intestine um, and the small intestine. Just one more time, we said this is the hepatic artery, this is the hepatic vein, this is the systemic circulation, and this is a hepatic portal. Do not confuse hepatic portal with the hepatic vein. Both of them are called vein, but this is a short vein, which is the purple, between the intestine and the liver, while this is draining the, the blood from the liver, bring it to the inferior vena cava, which will take it all the way uh, to the right um, atrium together with the superior vena cava. Last thing here is the pulmonary circulation. We have this, which is the pulmonary trunk, and the pulmonary trunk is not called artery, most of the time they call it trunk, and it will divide into right and left pulmonary arteries. It's, it's blue, but it's artery. So this will be the left uh, pulmonary artery, and this will be the right pulmonary artery. It's going to divide into pulmonary arteries inside the lung. So it's delivering the deoxygenated blood to the lung after it gets oxygenated in the lung it will go back from this. So the red here is the uh, pulmonary veins. And it, as you see here, it will take it all the way back to this, which is the left atrium. From the left atrium, it's oxygenated now. It will go to the left ventricle, relieving through the aorta, and so on. So always remember that in all over the body that we did so far, all reds are arteries, all veins are blue, except pulmonary is the opposite. The arteries are blue and the, re uh, the veins are red. And that's it for this part.